Hi everyone, this is Miss Katie, the Children's Coordinator at the Pittston Memorial Library. I am here to read you a few more chapters in our book, Lulu and the Brontosaurus by Judith Viorst for our Chicka Chicka chapter books. Last week, actually two weeks ago, since we were, we did not have Chicka Chicka chapter books last Wednesday, uh, the first week in March. So two weeks ago, the chapters that we read were chapter six, through chapter 11, sorry, chapter 10. Six through 10 is what we read last week. So I'll be reading those for you today so that you can get caught up on our story and then hopefully join us tomorrow at 4 p.m. Wednesday, 4 p.m. at the library for the last few chapters of our book. So let's get started. This is chapter six of Lulu and the Brontosaurus. Oh, let's do a little recap real quick. So recap of the first five chapters. Lulu, this is Lulu, this is Lulu, and it's her birthday. And what she wants for her birthday this year is a brontosaurus. Now, her parents normally do not say no to her, ever. They never say no to her. She's pretty spoiled, is what most people would say about her. But she asks for a brontosaurus, and her parents say no. And she keeps bugging them and bugging them and throwing tantrums and doing all kinds of things to try to get them to change their mind, but they never do. So she decides to take matters into her own hands and she goes out into the forest behind her house on a search for a brontosaurus. Now, the first part of chapter six is going to be her song about how she's trying to find a brontosaurus. I will sing it one way. You could sing it any way you'd like. <clears throat> Um, yes, the first obstacle that she met going into this deep, dark forest was a big, giant snake. But she was more clever, or maybe more mean, <laughs> than the snake was, and she got away from it. So now she's on her way, past the snake, going on to the next thing. So, this is chapter six of Lulu and the Brontosaurus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a Bronta Brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a Brontosaurus for a pet. Singing her Brontosaurus song in a louder and louder voice, Lulu was waking up all the nappers all over the forest. Some were annoyed. Some were extremely annoyed. Among the extremely annoyed was a silky, slinky lady tiger who yawned and stretched and rubbed her bright green eyes and then with a ferocious roar. Give me your best roar. Excellent. Sprung out from behind some trees and pounced on Lulu. Look at this crazy, scary tiger. You're a big pain, the tiger said. Remember, that's what people say about Lulu all the time. <laughs> so I'm going to eat you up for my afternoon snack. Uh-uh, said Lulu. I'm bonking you on the head. And swinging, swinging, swinging with all of her might, Lulu bonked the tiger with her suitcase. The tiger yelled, ow, and fell down in a pitiful black and orange striped heap on the forest floor. Lulu brushed off a few tiger hairs that were stuck to the side of her tiger bonking suitcase, and she went on trudging deeper into the forest. Ooh, poor tiger. <laughs> well, that's a snake and a tiger that she's defeated. I don't know what can stop Lulu at this point. Chapter 7. As the afternoon turned into late afternoon and then into early evening, Lulu trudged ever deeper into the forest. When she felt hungry, she opened her suitcase and took out a pickle sandwich. Do you like pickles? Would you eat a pickle sandwich? Would that be what you take on an adventure? I don't know. I love pickles, so maybe I would. When she felt cold, she took out a sweater and socks. And when it got buggy, she opened her suitcase and took out some bug spray and sprayed and sprayed. She was feeling a little tired, but she kept on trudging and swinging her suitcase and singing her song. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronto brontosaurus for a pet. Here's Lulu getting all the stuff out of her suitcase that she might need. Now, a big black bear who liked listening to the music that the insects make in the early evening couldn't hear their song because Lulu's song was louder. Plus, a lot of the insects were deader now because Lulu kept on spraying them with her bug spray. This made him mad. Then madder, then madder than that. He growled a thunderous growl. Can you do a thunderous growl? Thunderous would be so loud. Excellent job. And then he lumbered heavily down the forest path and stood on his two hind legs in front of Lulu. Do you know what hind legs are? That means an animal with four legs, that's their two back legs, hind legs, just like he's doing. He looks like he's standing like a person, right? Waving a big clawy paw in her face, he said, you're interrupting my favorite program. This is a Lulu aside. Please don't give me an, any argument. In my story, bears are allowed to have favorite programs. So, I'm going to scratch you to pieces with my claws, the bear said. There's that big scary bear. And Lulu, much smaller. Lulu glanced at the big black bear and put her hands on her hips. Nobody's scratching me, she told the bear. Then she jumped as high as she possibly could into the air. Then she landed as hard as she possibly could on his foot. The bear yelled, ow, and went limping away as fast as a bear could limp with one stomped foot. And after shaking some broken bear toenails off the bottom of her bear stomping shoes, Lulu went trudging deeper into the forest. This wily girl is defeating all the crazy animals. First a snake, then a tiger, now a bear. Chapter eight. Lulu was now in the deepest, darkest, quietest part of the forest. It was getting quite late and she was getting quite tired. She took her sleeping bag out of her suitcase, spread it on the ground and lay down to sleep. But before she slept, she sang her song one more time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get to Brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a brontosaurus for a pet. Actually, she never even got to sing the last line because before she could get to it, she was already asleep. There she is, sleeping in her sleeping bag in the middle of this forest. Do you think you would be brave enough to sleep in the middle of a forest alone like this? She doesn't seem to be afraid of anything. Chapter 8 and one half. At dawn, Lulu woke to the sound of birds calling to one another and the dusky musky smell of the forest floor and the feel of a gentle late summer breeze blowing across her face and the taste, because she hadn't bothered to brush her teeth before bedtime, of yesterday's pickle sandwich. She also woke to the sight of something so huge, so enormous, so utterly gigantic that she thought, no, she was sure that she was still dreaming. It looked like a mountain, except this mountain had legs and a very long neck and a very small head. It was, what do you think it was? As I'm sure you've already figured out, it was the brontosaurus that Lulu had been searching for. Here we go, look at those giant legs. Chapter nine. Lulu closed, then opened, then closed, then opened her eyes again and decided she wasn't dreaming after all. She quickly climbed out of her sleeping bag and announced to the brontosaurus, it's my birthday today and just in time, I found you. No, I've found you, the brontosaurus told Lulu, and I'd like to wish you a very happy birthday. 
Maybe the brontosaurus was looking for her. Oh, it will be very happy, Lulu said to the brontosaurus, because you, and she patted his ankle, because his ankle was as high as she could reach, you are the pet I am getting for my birthday. The brontosaurus bent down his neck so that his face was close to Lulu's. He looked at her back, he looked at her back to front and head to toes, sniffing at her carefully with his brontosaurus nose and making a rumbling noise. Nobody knows how dinosaurs sound, but in my story, they rumble. And slowly nodding, nodding his pinheaded head. <laughs> a pet, he said to Lulu, after he'd nodded for a while, is a very good thing. A very, very good thing, Lulu replied. She opened her suitcase and went digging around inside and pulled out a white leather collar, which she fastened around the brontosaurus's neck. Now I'll just attach this leash. She dug some more and found a long, long leash in her suitcase. And I will take you home with me. Lulu attached the leash to the collar, feeling so pleased with herself that she sang a whole new brontosaurus song. I got it, I got it, I got what I wanted to get. A bronta, bronta, brontosaurus for a pet. I got it, I got it, I got what I wanted. A brontosaurus for a pet. But how does he look? He doesn't look too happy, does he? She looks very happy. Not so happy here, though. She would have kept feeling pleased with herself, except now the brontosaurus was shaking his head. And now in his big rumbling voice, he was saying, no. He was saying no and shaking his head until the collar and the leash both flew off. No, he said. I don't wish to be your pet. See him? He looks pretty angry, doesn't he? Lulu, remember, hated hearing the word no. She really, really hated hearing no. So she screeched until all the birds fled from the trees, and then she threw herself down on the forest floor, and then she kicked her heels and waved her arms. So she's throwing her temper tantrum, which always seemed to work on her parents until this last time. Do you think it'll work on the dinosaur too? We'll see. The brontosaurus waited pat patiently without saying one more word until she had stopped with the screeching and the kicking and the waving. Finished now? He quite politely asked. Maybe I am, Lulu said, and maybe I'm not. It all depends. And here, she shook a finger right in the brontosaurus' face. This girl was a pain, but she was no scaredy cat. It all depends on whether you stop saying no and start saying yes to being my pet. The brontosaurus shook his head, no, some more. Lulu thought about screeching and so forth some more. But instead, she said in a very snippy voice, Now listen here. You were the one who said to me just a minute ago that, and I quote, a pet is a very good thing. Yes, that's what I said, the brontosaurus admitted. So what, Lulu asked, is your problem, Mr. B? Oh, no problem, he answered, just a misunderstanding. Because when I said that a pet is a very good thing, I didn't mean that I wanted to be your pet. I meant that you would be a good pet for me. Uh-oh. Chapter 10. This is our last chapter for today. Lulu's eyes were two round O's of amazement. She tried to speak, but at first no words came out. Then finally she was able to say in a squeaky, amazed kind of voice, I don't think I heard what I think I just heard, Mr. B. Oh, you did indeed, the brontosaurus replied. Well, if I did, Lulu's voice was back to being its old bossy self again. Well, if I did, I've got some news for you. A person has a pet. An animal is a pet. A person can't be an animal's pet ever. And I have some news for you, the brontosaurus said to Lulu, except that he spoke more politely than Lulu had done. 
you're about to be the first person ever to be an animal's pet. Congratulations. And once again, happy birthday. He reached out a hand, or whatever you want to call it, and gently scooped Lulu off the forest floor. He then plumped her gently down where his back met his neck. Hold on tight, little pet, he said to Lulu. I'll pull off some leaves from the tops of the trees for your breakfast, and then I'm taking you home to live with me. No, yelled Lulu. No, 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 a billion zillion times no. Yes, 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 the brontosaurus replied. I'll feed you and pat you and play with you and treat you very nicely. And all I expect from you is to sit and roll over and fetch a ball and do cute tricks. What did he think she was? Some kind of dog girl? I really don't know. I can't read a dinosaur's mind. Here's Lulu trying to say no, and the brontosaurus saying, yes. Lulu thought about screeching and throwing herself on the forest floor, except that the forest floor was a long way down. She thought about squeezing the dinosaur dead, like she had with the snake, except that she needed both hands to hang onto his neck. And she thought about swinging and swinging her suitcase and bonking him on the head, like she had with the tiger, except she'd left her suitcase under a tree. And she couldn't stomp on his foot because his, like she had with the bear, because his feet were far too far from his back where he had plunked her. Then Lulu started to think that the only thing farther from where the brontosaurus had plunked her was her home. Her home where her mom and her dad were waiting. Her very own home where no one, not even when she was being a pain, which was most of the time, had ever, ever expected her to sit and roll over and fetch and do cute tricks. I want to go home to my house, Lulu told the brontosaurus, then added in a lot less bossier voice, please let me go back to my house, Mr. B. This was maybe the very first time in Lulu's entire life that she, without being told, had used the P word. Please. And yet the brontosaurus shook his head no. Once you get used to it, he, told, he kindly told Lulu. I truly believe you'll like being a pet. Lulu imagined being a pet in the house of this brontosaurus and never seeing her mom or her dad again. She imagined eating leaves and doing cute tricks, and she said to herself that if only she could turn today into yesterday, she wouldn't go looking for dinosaurs in the forest, and she never would have said foo on you to her mom and her dad. She was feeling especially sorry that she'd ever said foo on you to her mom and her dad. That is the end of our chapters for this week. We're going to leave Lulu in this pickle. A pickle is like a bad, a rough situation, a complicated situation. So she, the brontosaurus, is thinking about taking her off to his house to be the pet. She doesn't want to go. She wants to go home. And she might even want to say sorry to her parents for how she acted. So next week, or if you can make it tomorrow for a Chicka Chicka chapter books, we will finish this story out and figure out what happens to Lulu and the brontosaurus. If you would like to do a craft at home related to these, to chapters six through 10 that we just read, we, what we did last week in Chicka Chicka chapter books was to imagine if you were going to be a pet of a brontosaurus, what would your house look like? So some dogs have houses that are outside or other pets like rabbits or something like that. What would your house look like? You could design it so that it would be nice and cozy and comfy, or maybe it would look really cool and be very fashionable and funky. Who knows? It's up to you. Thanks for joining in this week. And we'll be posting a video with the last chapters from this book uh, later this week as well as finishing the book tomorrow in Ch Chicka Chicka Chapter Books. We can't wait to see you there. Thanks for joining in.